I, uh, I tell a lot of people that you are my soul sister and my, oh, my well, obviously my creative director <laughs> and my sister from another mister. Definitely, definitely from another mister. My fucking home girl. I am. Um, and producer extraordinaire that you are. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun making this album with you. <laughs> Fighter, People Like You, Home. After those three songs, I called Dana and said, yo, I want to make my whole album with Jen DeSilvio. And then the world shut down, and you and I tried to figure out 25 times how to make this album. I was going to come to LA, and then you were, gonna, you were trying to figure out how to come to New York. I was then going to still try to come to LA, and then I got pregnant again. And I was like, no, dude, you have to come to New Jersey because I'm pregnant. Well, yeah, I don't know if you knew, but you were one of the big ones on the bucket list. And when it happened, I was like, are we friends? Right away, I was like, this bitch bring, brought me food. And we wrote a song, she plays piano. And you told the truth, that's the other thing. You were just like, and here's the honest Christina, this one I'm going through, and I was like, thank God. Actually, it's probably one of my favorite um, not in LA music events, I would say. Really? Well, yeah, it was well, just the world was also closed, so we kind of had everything to ourselves. Exactly, and we were kind of all in it together. And I feel like, I always say that like, the artist, when you make an album, you forever remember it as that capsule in time. Like, so for instance, like, I don't like my first album because I didn't like January of 2011. It was like my least favorite year ever. Other people hear it as music, I hear it as like that moment in time. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I love my second album because I loved being in England for the whole summer in 2013. So I love my second record no matter what it did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so for this one, like I will always love this album because I will forever remember the pandemic in Jersey with you and Gina and Nikki and Paul and Carmela and like, you know, we had so much fun making it. Do you know what I mean? What, um, what's your favorite song on the album? I love Surrender. I love Home. I love Blue. I love Roses in the Rain. <laughs> I think I named pretty much everything. I think you did. I'm trying to think what um, you missed. Oh, Ever Gone? Uh, <laughs> what's yours? What's your favorite? My favorite's Blue, but but for a very good reason, because when Luke Satal Singh and I wrote it, I hadn't yet totally understood the concept of the album that I wanted to put out. I had, it was 2019, and I was just in the phase of writing, like I was just freely writing. And I didn't yet have a title for the album, like a overall idea of what it would be. I was just making the pieces. And then as soon as we wrote Blue, I remember, I don't even know if it was the same day or the next day, whenever I heard the like demo, I was like, oh, the album will be called A Lighter Shade of Blue. And I'm gonna choose all wow. the songs that like take, I don't know, people on the journey of me going from a darker, from a dark place to a light place. And what's crazy is I didn't even know how dark it was gonna get, you know? And now, like when we made the album, Life kept getting crazier and harder, and and it like all kept still working. And like so now when I talk about it, yeah, I can say that's so true. That all these like surrender hits so different after losing Rosie, and uh, you know my the song Mothers I wrote before I even had a miscarriage. It was just about you know me and Amy Wedge talking about how hard motherhood is, and I didn't even know how hard it would get. So like it's so weirdly like foreshadowing for like the experience of my life and uh, blue, I feel like blue is the beginning. Like it was the moment I knew exactly what I wanted to say. Christina Evergon, um, yeah. the story of that. So Pete Gambarg, my a &R guy, he came to me and brought a piece of this song. And I was in a very dark place after Rosie had passed away. We had already finished the album. We had already cut everything. We were already mixing. 
I really didn't know how to sort of grieve the loss of Rosie and then go back into being a recording artist. Like I couldn't find the bridge. And I thought to myself, I can't put out an album that's already written and doesn't represent Rosie. And I can't, like I can't not talk about her. And then I also don't know how to talk about her yet. And it was a very kind of gray area. And then Pete came to me with this song, which he had never done in my whole career. Had never brought me someone else's idea. And he brought me a piece of it and said, this really moved me and I think it might move you. And I feel like only Pete Gambard could have done that because I feel like <laughs> anybody else it would have been slightly like too soon. But I love Pete so much and, and uh, I think, I don't think he realized how it sort of saved me wow. in a way where I felt ready to, uh, to get back to work. And so when we sat with it and finished writing it, it made sense to me that that would be the last song we add to the album, but the first song that we share with the world so that my narrative would be true. Have you told them how much it's helped you? You know, I definitely have. I tell Pete I love him all the time, but I probably should tell him again. Yeah. <laughs> love him. Mothers I wrote with one of my favorite moms ever, Amy Wedge. Yeah. And David Hodges was there and helped us out as well. And he produced the song. Yep. His demo really is what we ended up using. It just was so special, like being in the room at that time, his piano playing and the way we were singing. I mean, it just was like a moment like we really captured. Yeah. And uh, the song is about the struggle of becoming a mom. As wonderful as it is, it is equally as hard. And I feel like I had a lot of postpartum depression and I had a lot of things that nobody told me about that was gonna happen possibly. And I just remember coming out of it thinking that when I write music again, when I, when I like go back to work, I need to write a song about how crazy this is yeah, and yeah, also yeah. write a love letter to all the moms who go through it. Yeah. And so that's what it's about. We did it. This was fun. So much fun. I can't believe that you actually drove me around LA. I know, and um, we made a really cool record. We did. I'm excited for the world to hear it. I am too, but can we eat? Yeah, I'm starving. All right. <laughs>